What is going on guys? Grave here today. I'd like to talk about the weapon changes coming with the final shape. And in this video, I mainly want to talk about the exotic weapon changes. This was kind of a shock to a lot of people in the community uh, when the blog post came out because I think a lot of people were not expecting some of these to be nerfed because some of these exotics have been nerfed in the past. Now, I think a lot of us were expecting some buffs, some of the exotics that maybe are not used a lot because that's kind of something that you know Bungie does fairly often but let's go ahead and hop right into it talk about the nerfs and buffs first of all uh, the divinity while it is unchanged for pvp the number of shots needed to generate the cage against enemies has been increased by 75 percent for the rat king the firing animation has been changed to make it slightly easier to control at a higher fire rate the devil's ruin they fixed a fire animation bug the symmetry, in addition to its current bonuses, the catalyst now also provides plus 10 reload speed and handling. Uh, the Galahorn, the wolf pack rounds appear to not to use a solar effect. The Royal Entry Void rocket launcher now allows no use, uh, uses of void effects when it's buffed by the Galahorn. So the Galahorn almost kind of looked like it was arc anytime that you shot it, and now it will show it to be what it really is, a solar effect. The Touch of Malice, the Darkness Ball Burn effect now lasts 1.5 seconds longer. The Osteostriga, the Poison Burst effect on kills has a 4 second cooldown. Bungie felt that this weapon was too good at spreading poison. Now the Osteostriga had already been nerfed uh, from you know pretty much last year. Uh, last year it was one of the go-to weapons, especially if you want to need more, make more of a kind of poison build. And now they're nerfing the Osteostriga again, which I thought was kind of odd. Uh, the Necrochasm uh, Precision Kills now also grant faster reload speed, and the burn duration has been increased by 1.5 seconds. The Catalyst has also been overhauled. Damaging three combatants in quick succession provides a period of increased damage range and aim assist. The Lament Healing Effect and the High-End Heavy Chain Attack damage has been reduced by 20%. It's worth noting that the combos at low stacks aren't as impacted as heavily as the weapon still gets that 7% global buff to swords. But the Lament, of course, is something that a lot of people use either in solo or group play for boss phases. And that's something that I think a lot of people, once again, did not expect to see. Because in my opinion, the Osteostrega and the Lament are things that I see players use. But it's not something that I see, you know, just everyone using. That's the only, you know, kind of heavy weapon exotic or the, you know, uh, just a normal kinetic weapon exotic that I see players using. It's kind of odd to me that they're nerfing those two as much as they are. The Dead Man's Tail. The spike stacks grant bonus stability in addition to aim assist and range and better reload speed. With the catalyst applied, they slightly reduced accuracy, slightly increased fall off scale based on on the fire rate. The update also removes PV, uh, PVE only damage buff that is scaled with the spike stacks and replaces it with a flat 15% damage bonus at max stack. This is going to make the dead man's tail a little bit weaker in my opinion until we really can see some testing with this. We're not going to be 100% sure but that's another weapon that you don't see people use all the time. Probably less really uh, than some of the other ones here on the list. The Dead Man's Tail getting a bit of a nerf as well. The colony spawns additional uh, robots on final blows with more robots spawning depending on the tougher enemies. That's going to help out that weapon some. The Truth, which is a rocket launcher that is not really that good and has not been used that much in a while. They're going to increase the area of effect damage and the total reserves by three. They noted that this is also on top of the reserve change in high impact rocket launchers inside of the update 7.3.5. So the truth may start to be a bit better. I still think it needs some work if you want it to be one of those top tier um, rocket launchers because there's only a few in my opinion that are exotic that are really good to use. But mainly a lot of people do not use exotic rocket launchers as much as they would with you know maybe a legendary one. If you don't want to use the Dragon's Breath or the Galahorn, really there's not a lot of other options out there where they stand out in every scenario. There might be some you know certain scenarios where you could use different rocket launchers, maybe like the Deathbringer or something. But I do think the truth needs to be bumped up enough to where it is definitely worth using, uh, even if it's not maybe a meta rocket launcher. It's at least worth it's at least worth using it, it all. You know, uh, right now it's not really worth using it any time or scenario. 
The Cerberus Plus 1, the focus fire on special reloads following a kill, no longer reduces the range or rate of fire. The Queen Breaker is a 12% damage buff against bosses, mini bosses, champions, and vehicles. Reserve ammo also is increased by 3. They also indicated that more changes are coming to this weapon in future updates. So it looks like they're trying to put the Queen Breaker kind of to the top of the damage uh, meta maybe in the future. I'm still not sure if the Queen Breaker is going to be something that you see a lot of people using, but a 12% damage buff against bosses, mini bosses, and champions is definitely something to consider uh, because that's going to be a pretty good bit of an increase. Uh, the Bastion Saints Fist perk also has been reworked. When dealing damage with the melee, the charge rate, damage, and reload speed increases for a short duration. Landing most of the pellets in a burst also increases your melee range. Uh, the vow breaking a max a shield or a match shield or piercing a champion's barrier causes the uh, enemy to also ignite. For the deterministic chaos, the guided and anti-barrier champion trait will heavy uh, with heavy metal now causes every fourth bullet to make targets volatile. Causing the system, uh, causing this the sixteenth bullet to weaken enemies. So that's something that is pretty interesting there on the deterministic chaos, the borealis, hard light, and dead messenger. These three utilize the perk known as the fundamentals, which will now maintain the currently equipped elemental damage uh, current applied even after death or respawn. Players no longer have to rapidly change ammo when respawning. So that's something kind of that will help out uh, also kind of a quality of life thing in my opinion it says in addition the sunshot trinity ghoul polaris lance and graviton lance are seeing their splash damage potential reduced by 10 percent uh, bungie said they felt that the weapons were suddenly overperforming with the other damage buff changes being made now i'm kind of interested to see this uh, trinity ghoul polaris lance graviton lance are all really good weapons along with the sunshot but I'm kind of curious how this is going to be affected once we're away from this season. And Solar's not really the main focus of the artifact. I felt like, you know, the Sunshot and the Polaris Lance were really good this season for that reason. That's why you saw so many people running it. Because you have all of those Solar buffs. Now, saying that, the Sunshot has always been good off and on by itself. It's just a great hand cannon, especially, especially if you're a hand cannon user. When it comes to the Polaris Lance, you really don't see a lot of people using that as much as they did this season because it is a slower fire rate weapon and in my opinion not great of course in close encounters at any time even this season or before but overall i'm kind of shocked at that one too just because unless you know they know already that you know what next season is going to hold for the artifact maybe there's going to be still some solar stuff in there but i figure they're going to kind of go with something more of a hybrid kind of artifact i'm not sure exactly how they're going to do that going forward considering the way we can build classes now is going to change. It says exotics uh, in general, Bungie said they kind of, you know, want to give a quality of life update for most of the weapons and available perks. And it says with sunsetting being reversed, they have adjusted a wide variety of perks, even removing an, uh, any remaining traces of, you know, underdog uh, in favor of Pulse Monitor. Chain Reaction, Archer's Gambit, I've also seen nerfs in some capacity, while Grave Robber. Uh, eddy current chill clip high ground osmosis and permeability will be buffed so they're not going to make a lot of changes to these weapons like i said this is going to affect legendary weapons as well but mainly in this video i just kind of wanted to talk about the exotics and like i said i think a lot of the community was kind of shocked about this uh, there's been a lot of talk about how people did not realize there was going to be as many weapon nerfs going into the final shape considering Bungie seems to be kind of throwing out all the stops for the final shape. It looks like it's going to be a absolute blast to play. A lot of the stuff they're doing seems like it's going to pretty much break the game that we know as of today. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things that are different. And I was kind of shocked to see myself a lot of these changes to some of these weapons. I was really hoping since they were reversing sunsetting, we're going to have a lot of ways to build classes now with, you know, combining your different, you know, uh, subclasses together. I was hoping a lot of these weapons were just going to get buffed and it was going to be just a, you know, a blast to play because you know everything's going to be strong. We're getting new enemies and, and things like that to face and you raid. So I was kind of, like I said, kind of surprised to see that the Osteostrega, the Divinity, and the Lament were getting nerfed. But some of these other weapons buffs may be you know, kind of 
kind of, kind of trying to put them on the map and you know make people people use stuff that they have not used recently. Leave me a comment with your thoughts. Let me know what you think about these changes to these exotics. And of course, if you like the video, hit the like. If you have not subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.